What's going on guys, my name's Theo Atrix and welcome to the essential and helpful untradeables in old school. I made a video pretty similar to this one a couple of years ago, but since then there have been a lot of updates and a lot of items that should be added to that list. So this video will be split up into two sections, the essentials and the helpful items. Within each of those sections there will be the combat, skilling and quality of life items. Combat will mostly relate to worn items, skilling is anything that will speed up the XP rate of certain skills and quality of life is things like teleports, shortcuts, and access to certain areas. Starting right off with the essential combat items. The first on this list is the Arva's Accumulator. You obtain the first two Arva's devices after completing the Animal Magnetism quest, and then Arva's Assembler, which is an upgraded version of the Arva's device, is unlocked after Dragon Slayer 2. Arva's Attractor and Accumulator have a 72% chance of automatically picking up your ammunition, whereas the Assembler has an 80% chance. On top of that, the higher level devices give a better range bonus as well, and you should always be using Arva's device whenever you're training your range level. The next essential combat item is the God Cape or the Mage Arena 2 Capes. The God Capes give the highest magic attack bonus in that slot, and the imbued God Cape from the Mage Arena 2 gives a magic strength bonus, which increases your damage with magic. To retrieve the cape, you need to defeat Collodion in all four of his forms, and then after killing them, you step into a a sparkling pool and pray at the statue at the bottom to retrieve the normal god cape. To imbue the god capes, you need to use the items dropped by three very high level bosses in the Mage Arena 2 mini quest. In order to get the first god cape, you need level 60 magic, and for the imbued god cape, you need level 75 magic, and this should always be used when you're bursting your slayer tasks or doing anything magic related. The next item is the Fire Cape, and this is essential for Slayer, Bossing, and melee combat in general. The Fire Cape gives a plus 4 strength bonus, some attack bonuses, as well as a plus 2 prayer bonus. And although Jad can be quite hard for some newer players, I've created a video about a Jad simulator in the past that will really help you get used to the prayer flicking at Jad, but Jad is usually failed due to the healers that come out, so be sure to watch a few guides before you give it a shot. The next essential combat item is the Dragon Defender, and once you have a combination of level 130 when you add your attack and strength level, you can enter the Warriors Guild to kill the Cyclopses for a chance of getting a Defender. The Dragon Defender itself has very low defensive bonuses, however it gives very high attack and strength bonuses, making it overall one of the best items you can use in your shield slot whenever you're training your melee. The next item is the Barrow's Gloves, and these are rewarded after Recipe for Disaster. Completing Recipe for Disaster requires 175 quest points, and this should be a long-term goal of any main account. The Barrow's Gloves and all of the other gloves that you can obtain from the quest give attack bonuses, defense bonuses, and a strength bonus. Next is the Salve Amulet, Imbued and Enchanted. After the Haunted Mine quest, you can mine Salve Shards using a chisel and then string it with a ball of wool. The Salve Amulet gives a 15% attack and strength boost whenever you're attacking an undead monster. Imbuing the Salve Amulet at the Nightmare Zone will move that 15% boost to magic and ranged as well. Enchanting the Salve Amulet after completing the Tarn's Lair mini quest, it boosts you up to a 20% attack and strength boost and if it's enchanted and imbued, it will give a 20% ranged and magic boost as well. This item is essential, especially for raids and for any other undead monsters or bosses in the game. The power of the Void Knight armor should not be underestimated, and actually gets a place on the essential part of the combat list. Void Mage is not always worth your time, but getting Void ranged and melee is almost vital for every main account. Upgrading this to Elite Void should be a long-term goal of your account as well, and upgrading to Elite will also increase the bonuses of the ranged and magic Void setup. Void's bonuses stack with the Salve Amulet, making Void one of the best setups to use at certain high-level bosses, and having to only switch the helmet slot with the full void outfit, it saves a lot of inventory space for bosses where you'll need two different attack styles. The Black Mask Imbued or the Slayer Helmet Imbued is another essential combat item, and wearing either one of these on your Slayer task, you'll get a massive boost in your attack and strength. The Imbued version moves the boosts over to Magic and Ranged as well, and imbuing it will cost 1.25 million Nightmare Zone points, which will take a couple of hours to get at a lower level, but it is incredibly worth it. 
The next essential combat item is the Arc Light, and this item gives a 70% increase in the accuracy and damage whenever you're fighting any demonic creature. To make the Arc Light, you need to bring a Dark Light to the altar in the center of the Catacombs of Kurend and use at least three Ancient Shards on the Arc Light. Ancient Shards are dropped from any monster inside the Catacombs of Kurend, and if you do some of your Slayer tasks here, I guarantee you'll get a massive stack of them over time. The 70% accuracy and damage boost actually makes it it better than using the Abyssal Tentacle. The final item sort of fits into the combat category, but also sort of fits into the skilling category, and this is the Rune Pouch. And in the past, I've made a video on how to get Rune Pouches for a lot cheaper, but you can also buy a Rune Pouch by buying Tier 1 Emblems off the Grand Exchange and trading them in for Bounty Hunter points. Rune Pouches hold three types of runes in one inventory slot, which makes it useful for any activity in old school where you'll be carrying runes. Moving into the skilling items, since a lot of people do the motherload mine as soon as they unlock it, the Prospector outfit is actually an essential skilling outfit that is worth getting. Each piece of the set will give a small boost in itself, but you should always aim to get the whole set. Another set that is actually worth getting is the Lumberjack outfit, and you can get this from the Temple Trekking minigame. On the topic of skilling sets, the only other one that is worth getting is the Angler outfit if you know that you'll be going to Minnows. Getting the Angler outfit if you plan to stop at level 99 at barbarian fishing, then getting the angler outfit is not actually worth your time. Another essential skilling item is the crystal saw, and the crystal saw gives an invisible plus three level boost to your construction, which can stack with other construction boosts. That three level boost from the crystal saw could equal millions of GP in construction XP and can save you a ton of money on getting a maxed house. Now, some essential quality of life items and teleports. The first one is Full Graceful, which is obtained from Rooftop Agility. For those that played RuneScape 2, Graceful is your best alternative to resting. Wearing the Full Graceful set restores your run energy 30% faster when you're standing or walking. It also reduces your weight. Going for 99 in skills like runecrafting or farming, the Graceful outfit is extremely essential to save you so much time and money that you'd spend on stamina potions. Another quality of life essential is Fairy Rings, and you unlock these after starting Fairy Tale Part 2. The Draymon Staff is the untradeable involved here, and Fairy Rings are required in order to play the game most effectively, and there's also some clue scrolls that can only be accessed by Fairy Rings. Fairy Rings will speed up so many things in RuneScape, giving you shortcuts to so many different places. The next essential is the Ectophile, and this teleports you to the Ectophantus next to Port Phasmatis, and this is useful especially for farm runs, since there is a herb patch just near the teleport. The Ectophile can also be very helpful for questing and transport, since getting to Port Phasmatis in that area does take some time. Moving into the handy untradables, starting off with the handy combat untradable. First up is the Holy Wrench, and this is rewarded from the Rum Deal quest. The effect from having the Holy Wrench in your inventory is it gives you 2% more prayer points when you're drinking a dose of any kind of prayer restore potion. So that means instead of the 25% that a prayer potion would restore, it'll restore 27% instead. The Holy Wrench becomes most useful when you have above level 70 prayer. Below level 70 prayer, there's a lot of times where it actually won't won't help at all. It's worth checking the RuneScape wiki page of the Holy Wrench to see exactly which levels gives you the best boost. The next handy combat item is the Horror from the Deep books. The most useful two are the Book of Lore for ranged boost and the Book of Darkness for a magic boost. Another important point about these books is they can be taken deep into the wilderness since it's a pretty much free offhand item. Next is the Fighter Torso, and the Fighter Torso gives the same strength bonus as the Bandos Chestplate, which is the best in slot strength bonus in the game. The only difference is the Fighter Torso gives a lot lower defense bonuses, but it does have a lower defense requirement. The next handy combat item is the Crystal Shield, which is a fairly niche item, but gives very high defense bonuses. The shield actually gives the highest range defense of any shield slot item in the game. The final handy combat item is the Bone Crusher, and the Bone Crusher automatically buries the bones from monsters that you kill, and completing the Hard Mauritania Diary gives 50% of the XP from the bone, and the Elite Diary gives 100%. On top of that, the Dragon Bone Necklace stacks with the Bone Crusher, and the 
Dragon Bone Necklace restores your prayer points whenever you bury a bone, and the Bone Crusher will do that automatically, which means you can essentially get unlimited prayer points in some areas. Burying bones in the Catacombs of Kurend will give back prayer points even without the Dragon Bone Necklace, so taking a Bone Crusher in there will automatically restore your prayer points as well, making it an extremely handy combat item. Now for the handy skilling items. First up is the Magic Secators, which you should really go out of your way to get if you do a lot of farm runs. You get the Secators from Fairy Tale Part 1, and when you're wearing the Secators while harvesting a patch, you get 10% more of the crops. On top of that, you can use the Magic Secators when you're hunting herbivores, and it will give you better quality herbs from the herbivores. The next four handy skilling items are four diary rewards. The first one is the Kandarin Hard Diary, which unlocks the fastest way to train your agility from level 60 to level 90. Using the Seer's Teleport after you finish the agility course, you can teleport straight to the start of the agility course, speeding up your runs by a little bit. The Ardoyan Cape is an item very useful for farm runs and it also gives a stab attack bonus. And the Kurumja Gloves 3 at least gives you unlimited teleports to the mining site at Shiloh Village. Also, you can go underground in the Shiloh Village mine where there are a lot more gem rocks. The final portion of this video is the handy quality of life items, and the first one is unlocking Slayer Rings from your Slayer Master. Slayer Rings will speed up your Slayer XP rates by a lot, with teleports right into a lot of the Slayer Caves in RuneScape, as well as a teleport right next to Nii. Another reward that comes from the Nightmare Zone is the Scrolls of Redirection, and using a Scroll of Redirection on a House Teleport tablet, you can change the destination of the teleport to any of the House Portal locations across the map. The most useful useful ones are probably the Tavoli Teleport for the tree patch that's nearby, and the Polnavich Teleport for quick access to blackjacking. Anyways, that is the essential and handy untradeables in old school RuneScape. If you learned something today, I'd appreciate a like on this video, and if you'd like to see more old school RuneScape content like this one, be sure to subscribe to my channel. And a quick thank you to Sam IRL, The Monterey, and Epic Cows for being high level members of the community. They were able to help me a lot with making this video, so thank you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.